Hey, what's up everyone? It's Phil Meyer. The Xbox 360 digital store is officially closed, but that doesn't mean we can't still have fun with the console. It was in 2015 that Microsoft released a firmware update that allowed the 360 to use external USB storage up to 2 terabytes per device. I have an older video where I compare loading speeds from different storage devices. It's now 2024 and we have more options available to us. One of the common questions I get on my previous videos asks about performance between an SSD and a hard drive. I've always been curious about this myself and I recently found an opportunity to try it out. So let's do a side by side comparison on a handful of games. Now straight up, this comparison will also not be the most scientific. I've picked games from our library and I'll compare the performance when they are loaded from an SSD and a hard drive that I already own. The hard drive I'm testing with is the same one I've used on my console since 2015. The SSD is a half terabyte NVMe drive that I've placed inside a USB enclosure. If you'd like to see exactly what I'm using, check the video description and I'll list out the manufacturers and models. Let's start with Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag for the first test. I'm going to load one of my saves. Both the game and the save file are located on the same drive, either just on the hard drive or just the SSD. I've synchronized the timers to start the moment the game's menu disappears. Just before we get control of our character, the screen fades to black. I'm stopping the timers on the first black frame. The game loads about 5 seconds faster from the SSD. In this case, loading from the SSD takes about 79% as much time as loading from the hard drive. The next game is Deus Ex Human Revolution. For this one, I'll again load my save and the timer starts the moment the loading dialog appears. In this game, when loading has completed, you actually have to press a button to continue into the game, so the timer will stop the moment that prompt appears. This time the game loaded 4 seconds faster from the SSD, and in this case that's roughly 87% of the time it took to load from the hard drive. The next game is the excellent Halo Reach. The moment we launch the campaign from the main menu, the game will begin its loading process, and that's when the timer will start. The campaign takes a while to load, so enjoy the game's music in the meantime. When loading is completed, a menu item becomes enabled which you need to invoke in order to start the campaign. It's when this menu item is enabled that the timers will stop. The game loaded 18 seconds faster from the SSD, and in this case loading from the SSD took up about 71% of the amount of time it took to load from the hard drive. The next game is Mirror's Edge. The timer will start on the first frame of the loading screen. When the game is done loading, it transitions to an all-white screen as it then fades in the game world, so the timer will stop on that first all-white frame. This time around the difference isn't as notable with the SSD beating out the hard drive by 2 seconds and the game only taking 18 seconds to start from the hard drive. The next game is Saints Row 4. This one's a little harder to synchronize as there's minimal feedback when starting the game. However, the moment that I begin loading my save, the screen starts to fade to black and the timer will start on the first frame of that fade. When done loading, the game uses an animation to transition into gameplay, and I'm stopping the timer on the first frame of that animation. 
In this case the results are somewhat similar to Mirror's Edge, as the game doesn't take too long to load, and the SSD beats out the hard drive by just a couple seconds. The next game is Sleeping Dogs, which is an open world action game and in my opinion underrated. I'll again load my save, and the timer starts on the first frame of the loading screen. When the game is done loading, it transitions to black and then fades in the game world. The timer will stop on the first frame of that black screen. In this case, the results are pretty similar to the previous two games where the SSD beats out the hard drive by a couple seconds. For the seventh game, we'll use Star Wars The Force Unleashed, and the test here is the same as the others where I load a game save. When choosing to load a save, you'll first get a warning dialog telling you not to turn off your console. The timer starts the moment the dialog disappears. This game also transitions to a black screen before fading in the game world, but the screen is dark for about 2 seconds, so for better accuracy I'm stopping the timer on the first frame where I can start to see the game world. Now these are the closest results from any of the games so far, where the load was about 1 second faster from the SSD. For the final game, I of course had to use Skyrim. I put many hours into this game back in the day, and I remember a good amount of that time was waiting for loading screens. When loading a save, the game first fades out its menu, and the timer starts on that first frame of the fade out. In addition to the base game, I also have all three DLCs installed. These are Dawnguard, Hearthfire, and Dragonborn. All three of these were originally released in 2012. When the game is done loading its save, it transitions to an all black screen. I'll be stopping the timers on the first frame of that black screen. Loading from the SSD was 17 seconds faster than loading from the hard drive. This is not trivial, but it's actually on par with several of the previous games where it's roughly 79% of the time it took to load from the hard drive. You can see that the USB SSD performs faster than the USB hard drive in all cases, which is not a surprise at all. Thanks for watching the video and I hope you got what you're looking for from it. If you have any questions about what we just saw here, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks everyone and take care.